YouTube, Bandanagramma here. Where in the world is Bandanagramma? <laughs> I'm in Massachusetts at the home of my firstborn, my oldest son, Michael, and his three children. Uh, he's I'm here today all by myself because my son and my husband went to play disc golf, something they love to do. It's kind of like Frisbees, but it's set up like a golf game, if you know what that is. And my three grandkids are all in school. So I'm here all by myself and I've been sewing. I'm going to show you the aprons I made. Some of you who are on my Facebook page may have seen them already. Uh, my Facebook page is Susie, S-U-S-I-E, Ban, B-A-N, third word, Dana, D-A-N-A, -A, Susie Bandana. And if you want to go join that, you can be kept up to date on a lot of the activities I do on my Facebook page. And I'll be glad to have you there. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, the Bandana Grandma YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I put up a new video. So who all's here? Hey, Jack. Yeah, I wasn't planning this live stream. Let's see. Half Acre Dreams, Laura, Patty, Darlene, Tina, Kayla, Freddie Vincent, Melissa. Melissa, hello, sweetheart. Uh, my nephew, Jack, who I'll be seeing f this coming weekend when I travel to New York to visit family there. Freddie Vincent, that's McKenna. Now, I had no clue, McKenna. You fooled me on that one. I didn't know that that was your alias. <laughs> okay, Brenda Collins, hello, sweetheart. Karen Catalano, whereabouts in Massachusetts are you? I'm about 50 miles west of Boston. Well, I don't give out my son's, you know, particulars, but I'll just say we're on Cape Ann. We're on Cape Ann in Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, hi there, Microfarm Star. That's Kim. Hello, honey. And my new me. Hello, Brenda. I'm so glad to have you all here. That was quick to get so many in here. That's exciting. We got two inches of snow last night covered our garden with tarps. That is unbelievable. Yesterday we had high 80s here in Massachusetts, which is usually much cooler than my home of Maryland. So, but last, well, yesterday that was, yesterday daytime, and last night I went down into the 50s, so it was nice sleeping weather last night. And it's sunny and nice out today. I don't know the temps, but I'm guessing 60s, 70s out there now. So, Laura had snow and it was so cold. Woo -hoo. All right, yesterday on my Facebook page, Susie Bandana, I had shown some fabrics and I had asked which fabric everybody wanted me to make the next apron out of. And all of them were chosen by different people. So uh, I was glad to see that you all liked the fabrics I had chosen. But the one I chose, and I started it last night and finished it this morning, was this kitchen fabric. It's a black background with, it's retro, you know, with kitchen appliances and uh, utensils. And at the bottom, I have a red box pleat ruffle. So that's the one I made last night and this morning. And that's the fabric I chose. And tonight, oh, I gotta be careful not to hit my microphone. I'm assuming you can all hear me well because I'm wearing my, my, I remembered to bring my new microphone, my lapel mic, but I had to be careful not to hit it like I did last time. Thank you. Yes, I love this print. Isn't it cute? I think, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby, though I've seen it in other places too. But yeah, I love that print because, you know, I like, I like retro. Let me get out of that sun glare. I like retro, so that made me happy to find it. I'm going to show you the other aprons I made. And then I'm going to show you the next fabric I chose, and I'm going to get started on another apron. So we're going to pick you up and move you over here to this end of the table, where I have my pile of aprons I've finished. Okay, now this was one of the ones 
where I had purchased this ready-made, but it was very plain. It just ended with a white, you see this uh, seam binding on the edges? Well, the bottom just had seam binding and the ties were also made out of seam binding and were very short. So I replaced all the ties with these nice fabric ties in a contrasting color. And you can see they're all sewn very well and reinforced, so they're not going anywhere. And I put nice wide ties with a big bow on the waist part. And again, it's sewn down very well and reinforced. And I added this green ruffle at the bottom. So instead of a chintzy little apron, it's a nice twill apron with lovely accoutrements added uh, with the fabric. And I did that to three aprons, actually four, of different prints. So there's this green and rose one. And then I did the same thing with this apple print, adding the red and red ties and red neckties up here. So that's the apple print. They all have a pocket right here. All right. And then I had a purple plum one, added the flounce on the bottom, and added the ties. And all everything I added is top stitch with detail all the way around, a nice even top stitching. And this one, you may remember, I gave away on a live stream. Well, the person who won it never contacted me. And I've written every way I know how to and announced it every way I know how to and she hasn't contacted me. And the rules were, if you don't contact me within five days to send me your uh, mailing address, you had a luck. And I'm gonna re-submit uh, this one to draw again. So I didn't have a drawing this Monday because I was traveling, but next Monday, Memorial Day, I'll be at my sister's house in upstate New York, out in the country in upstate New York. And we're going to have two drawings because my sister Jody is a paparazzi jewelry dealer uh, representative. And she is donating not one of their very nice $5 pieces. If you know paparazzi jewelry, you know they've got beautiful pieces and they're all only $5 each. Well, they also have a very elite line, which is $25. And she is donating one of her $25 necklaces and earring sets. And uh, if you look at my channel, I, um, I think my last live stream, I put a photo up of what she was donating. So next Monday, Memorial Day at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll have two giveaways. One will be for Jody's necklace, and the other will be to redraw for this apron because the winner did not claim it. So, what you need to do if you want to be in those drawings is on my previous live streams. One was for a mop. You need to go comment on that mop video that you would like to win. Now I'm forgetting. But if you look at my Facebook page, I spelled it all out there. Susie Bandana, you'll see. You got to comment on two different videos. One was my salmon patty video. And I think that was for the jewelry, but I'm not, I'm, I, I can't keep it straight. So look on my Susie Bandana Facebook page and you'll see the rules that you just need to go to the, uh, not chat, the uh, comments, the comments on those videos and write necklace on one and uh, apron on the other. And then my randomizer will pick from all those comments, somebody who has the word apron on the one on their comment will be picked and they'll win the apron or someone with the word necklace on the other live stream will win the necklace. And that's all being done next Monday on Memorial Day at one. I know that might be a difficult time for people to get away from a picnic or whatever, but it's a Monday and that's when I do my live stream. So, and my sister Jody will be with me, maybe even my sister Patty, maybe some of my other family members from New York so that'll be fun. So you're all welcome to come join me there. Now, you may have noticed there's somebody in my chat. Melissa, how sweet. I was just going to mention her. <laughs> Melissa just gave me 
a uh, super chat for $13.99. Thank you, Melissa. Bless your heart. Uh, that really helps my channel and I appreciate it. Thank you, honey. Now I was going to tell you, Melissa and her husband, uh, from Canada, and they are my, one of my top new favorite channels. First of all, her husband and her, and she, uh, have a channel called Curiosity Incorporated and he has an antique store. I know I got you at antiques, don't I? He has an antique store and he's like a picker and they are the most the cutest, most handsome couple, and they have adorable children. And they have this shop that they sell all their antiques in. But recently, they bought what originally was called a hoarder's house because it was a home that was being sold that was filled to the brim with all kinds of stuff. And then, out of respect for the previous owner, who was over 100 years old, and of course, you know, you can have a little leeway with people who are 100 years old and living in a house. They, uh, they, had, they were a potter, so they started calling it the potter's house, and all her pottery was in there, and they went through. It was the most interesting series, so check that out, the potter's house video, or we bought a hoarder's house video, and watch that whole series, and go ahead and subscribe to Curiosity, Inc. They don't need my plug. They have over, they've got going on 200,000, I think, or more. They're, they're doing wonderfully well in a short amount of time because their content is so good. But also, Melissa has her own channel called Melissa Archbold, A-R-C-H-B-O-L-D. So if you'd like to go subscribe to her as well, she has some fun family videos on there. Uh, and they're just a lovely couple. So you'll thank me for that. And my new me, Brenda, says she'd love to see that series. Brenda, it is captivating. Not only do they go through the house, but they fix the house up and, they, and now it's for sale. And from what it went to, to what it is, is great. And also, all the people they chose to come and work on the house, wonderful characters, almost like choosing uh, characters for a movie because everybody has uh, their own little personality and they interview them and they talk. It's just a great series. So there you go. Big plug for Melissa and for her husband on Curiosity Inc. and Melissa Archbold channels. So, yeah, I do give a plug when I'm excited about something. Not for just anybody, but something I really like. I will be happy to give a plug for it. So, here's my aprons I made, and I'm going to start making another. But first, I'm going to read your comments. I have to get close because my little 7.5 inch screen is so small on my iPad that I can't see it from a distance. What is this? Now, I don't know if she gave me two or if that's a hiccup, but either way, thank you, Melissa. That is just wonderful. All right, let's see. Whew. My new me says she finally made one good morning, and good morning to everybody who's in here. You make me so excited when you come and visit with me. Uh, let's see. I don't like to take too much time here because it gets kind of boring for you to watch me go through these, but I do want to catch any questions. Sound is great. Wonderful. That's what I want to hear because that was a problem I had before when I didn't have the lapel mic. The little mic in my uh, iPad just didn't seem to do the job every time. Yeah. Okay. Micro Farm Starter, which is Kim. She loves the rose one. All good choices, Susie. Lori's very diplomatic, but she's very sweet and kind, and she probably is serious. My new me loves the purple. Oh, yes. Brenda is a big purple fan. <laughs> yes, it is sad for that person. I really tried every way I knew how to contact her, and I didn't get any response at all. Okay, Tamsin, hello. I remember you just recently joined my channel. All right. Can't figure out the super chat, LOL. Well, don't do it again. I think you did it twice. <laughs> huh. Okay, Studious Girl has followed uh, my new, or, uh, the channel I just shouted out, Curiosity Incorporated. Okay, Tamsin had an old home restored. 
new subscriber to your wonderful channel. I don't know if she's talking to me or uh, I think, I know she's a new subscriber to me. I remember her name. Good morning, Polonia. That other Deborah, she's late. Not too late. I just had a little intro going here. Oh, Melissa, you're the sweetest. <laughs> okay, good morning, Mary. All right, I'm going to leave the chat now. And the rest of this may not be all that interesting to some of you because it's going to be a lot of downtime because I'm just going to be leaving the camera on as I go about uh, making another apron. And of course, real time as opposed to videoing an apron and editing it and just giving you the highlights can get kind of tedious for me too. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the fabric I've chosen to use next. And the fabric I've chosen to use is the labels. It's kind of a gold fabric with all of these different labels on it with a lot different colors. And I just think that'll make the cutest apron. So that's going to be my next one. And I need to pick a solid color to go with it because I like to mix them up. I like to make a little uh, maybe ruffle with a solid color or sometimes I even make the ties in a solid color. So I'll show you the colors I have and maybe you can help me decide. Now this color I have, but I'm not going to choose it. Even if you like it, I won't because <laughs> I don't like it. Because these reds are kind of more raspberry and this is a bright red. And that just wouldn't do it. Okay, now this one would go. This is some more of the green. That would go with it. That would look okay because there's green in here. So that would go green. There's also purple that I have on hand because I'm traveling. I don't have all my fabrics with me. Here's some purple. This would not look terrible because if you look, the background like here is a light purple. You see there's some and right here. This is kind of a, it's kind of purplish colors in here. So this would not look bad. I think made up, it would be cute. Or I could just wait later today. My husband and I are going out shopping and I may just look for something that would be better. So if you were to choose a solid color fabric to go with this, which one would you choose? What, what color do you think you'd like to go with this? I may just do that. I may just wait on the solid color to see what you guys say. But now I got to cut out the apron. As much as I love purple, I really like the looks of that green with this pattern. Yeah, that's my favorite so far is the green. But I could pick up something else. You know, I just love this. I just think it's rich looking and tasteful and yet fun and a little funky so that's me i like that okay now for cutting it out i don't have a pattern per se and this is something you can do even with your clothing if you don't have a pattern and you have something that fits you really well you can just use the article you have as a pattern so I'm going to open up this. Now normally I wash and dry all my fabric before I use it. I'm not doing that this time because I'm traveling. I'm just going to hope for the best here. So here's my fabric laid out. I also iron it beforehand. I'm not even sure if my son has an ironing board. And then I'm going to take one of these aprons and I'm gonna fold it in half. So I only have to trace half of it. Like this. I don't think you're getting a good view here with that light. I think, there, that's better. Yeah, that's better. So if I fold this apron in half, make sure it's absolutely in half. And then I'm going to put this fold on this fold. But look at all this waste over here. Don't want that. So we're going to snug this up so we don't waste a lot of fabric. And just make it wide enough to fit that folded in half apron on. So I'll do this a little at a time. Like I said, this gets a little tedious and persnickety. And you have to really want to know about sewing and enjoy watching creativity to stick around for this. Because there's no editing involved here. All right. 
All right, let's see how close we are now. All right, I still got this much waste. See that? So here's where the apron ends and here's where the material ends. I'm too frugal to waste that. So here we go. There's a nice cool breeze coming in that window now. It's blowing the curtains. All right, that's close enough right there. See? Now sometimes I just weight down my pattern, but that can get tricky if it wants to slide around. So I do have my pins here. I'll just put, oops, there goes my pin cushion. I'll just put a few pins in. And where my pincushion is round and it rolled away. Uh, all right. Here we go. Now you can be thinking about this too at home. If you have an apron you like or another piece of clothing, you just have to be careful to use the right kind. Sorry for the traffic going by. You have to use the right kind of fabric to match it up. You know, if you have a stretchy fabric, there are patterns for stretchy fabrics. You can't use just any old uh, fabric if the pattern is made for a stretch and vice versa. So, yeah, you want to be careful to match your fabrics. Now, this is a nice, like a canvas twill, and this is a nice, good, heavy cotton duct or something. So, they'll, they'll go well together. Now, as far as the ruffle, of course, I'm not going to cut the ruffle out. So, I'm going to fold that up and just trace around the bottom of the apron here, this part. Actually cut around, there's no tracing involved with me. I'm just gonna match up the ends, pin them, put them on the fold, and there we go. So, I'm gonna cut out the basic pattern for the front. Of course, you want to make sure that when you're dealing with patterns that you got it all running in the correct direction before you start cutting away. I've got a tie here that's getting in the way. Fold it under. Yeah. All right, something's a little screwy here. I think I got a bump in my fabric. You gotta be careful for that too. You don't want to get it out of whack here and you want to be careful if you're using a piece of clothing that you want don't be cutting into your clothing <laughs> you don't want to cut off the apron ties or slice into the side of the fabric so there is a little risk involved when you do this off the end here and then go in for the detail. Alrighty. Cut the main piece of the apron out. I'm still not happy with the light, how it's coming in here for you to see. I might put the camera on the other side of the table so there's you know, it's not good to backlight when you're filming. You, especially if there's a person in front of a window, that doesn't work well because they get all blacked out. Okay, to get all the pins. Alrighty, here's the apron piece. Okay, there's the body of the apron. 
you can see that. Now, when I start from scratch, oops, let me get you in there. Okay, this part up here, I need to cut another piece because, let me show you on the other one. When the fabric is not super thick, you want it to have some body to it. So like what I did with this one, I put a facing on the back. See, down here, uh, actually that was the back. Here's the front, and on the back, I made this facing that goes across here. This is the back side of the front fabric, but this is another front side. You know, it's a right side. And I it's like I lined the top with it so it would have a nice body to it. So to do that, I just have to cut another piece from like here all the way up and around. And then I sew them together and fold them over. And then I have the facing for this to make it nice and have a nice body and thickness to it and to be sturdy. So let me pick out the best place to cut that from without wasting fabric. Again, this is the persnickety part that wastes time on a live video. But if you're interested, it shows you how to do it. All right, so once again, I'm gonna fold this in half. With the fold line. Thusly. There we go. And then I'm going to take this one, my apron top, fold it in half, and see if this is big enough to fit it to get the. Uh, it's not quite big enough, okay? If I want to cut it just below the armhole type area here, over to here, it's not quite big enough. So I can't use that. I'm going to have to come down and use the wider part. Let me cut this little end off. Okay, so we're coming down here. We're gonna use the wider part. the what is now the pattern piece in half line up the fold make sure everything's nice and even big truck going by outside so it's making noise the windows are open because we need them open today it's nice out but it gets warm inside okay now that's fitting all right that is fitting And if I find my pins, I'm just probably can't see the delineation of the top piece from the bottom, but you'll see where I'm pinning here. This is like around the armhole here. And here's the underarm here. And I'm only going to go to here. So let's see. I'm going to see how deep I went on this one because this worked well. Yep, I just went below the armhole area. So just about to here. So we'll be cutting that out. Alrighty. Now I do not want to cut through my pattern. I mean my <laughs> good piece. <laughs> so we'll cut the end last. And again, I'm cutting out a lining or a facing for the bodice of the apron. So it has a finished edge all the way around and a nice weight to it. 
right, that's as far as I'm going to go, right to there, just to the underarm. This part right here will be the bodice uh, facing. So I'll take my pins out, take my apron off, and now I'm going to eyeball it straight across to here. Alright, so here's my facing. That's going to go on the underside of the bodice of the apron. Now, let me get this fabric out of the way. And how I go about putting the facing on is we lay out the apron body thusly. And then I put right sides together with this piece, which should match it perfectly. And see, it comes down to just underneath. Oh, that light is not good. Let me see if I can darken it a little. All right. Is that better? Okay. This is the wrong side. This is the right side because I have right sides together. And I'm going to pin this on. Like that. Oh, I forgot something. Live stream. Take the pins out. What should be done before I put this on is I should turn the hem right here. See this hem right here? I should turn it twice and sew it to make a finished edge before I put it on there. So I'm going to do that now. But let me check your comments, see if there's anything I need to answer. Let's see, Brenda says, sewing is something I've always wished I learned how to do. I'll find it interesting. Good. Laura enjoys watching. You have to stop blocking your microphone. Uh-oh, I'm doing it again. Sorry. I love your vintage. I love your style, vintage and feminine. Thank you, Victoria. Vicky. <laughs> Deborah likes the green. Let's say blue or cream, raspberry or green. Yeah, those are all good choices. Aquamarine, yeah, that would look pretty. <laughs> Let me see here. Your hair is getting so long, I like it when you wear it down. <laughs> Thank you. You know, at my age, I'm, I'm rebelling. They say, you know, if you listen to all the whatever is they say, you get to be a certainly over 60, you shouldn't be wearing long hair, but you know, I figure if I don't do me now, when am I going to do it? <laughs> so for me, I wear long hair. I also feel it's a faith choice to me too, just for me. I mean, not, I don't judge anybody else. I just say for me, I think long hair. And plus, you know, it's easy to put up when I want to put it up and I can braid it when I want to braid it. So it makes it easy. Yep, you can make patterns out of newspaper or a brown paper. Hello, that Jessica. Yep, sharp scissors, scissors are a plus. These actually I'm going to send to be sharpened soon. My daughter Heidi works at a garden center and they have a truck come in every Monday with this guy who sharpens knives and scissors and clippers and everything. So I'm going to send that there. Great table to work on. Yeah, my son had this table made. They're, they were very uh, artsy craftsy, old time-ish, and they found this old wood, and they had somebody make them up this table. So it's, it's pretty weathered looking and has dips and chunks in it, but that's the way they like it, and it's quite charming. Yeah, uh, let's see. Tamsin likes old-fashioned calico fabric. Suburban Hill Billy, hello, honey. Hi, Rebecca. Okay. All right, she's running out to a doctor's appointment. 
All right. All right, I don't know why. I'll have to check that. Okay, hi, Grandma. This is Grizz. Oh, boy. Can't wait to read this. Grizz is a character. I can't stay, but I was wondering if you could sew me up a butcher's apron with two pockets to hold teeth and claws. Ha, ha, ha. LOL. Later. Have a good one. Bye, Grizz. <laughs> Thanks for stopping in. I'm 57 on May 24th. I have long, thick brown hair to the waist. Good for you, Tamson. Yeah. I agree. I have long hair. Beautiful table. Yeah, it is a nice table that he has here. Yeah, I'm having a birthday next month. And this one is a big one. But next year is a really big one. <laughs> next year I'll be 70. So that's kind of... I just can't believe where the time went, but yeah, this, this in June, June 25th, I'll be 69 and I can't believe I don't feel 69. I feel like I should be maybe 54. <laughs> so, you know, I, I figure you just do you, you know, I, I try not to listen to what people say older people should do or how they should act or what they should wear or, you know what they should do. I'm just going to do me. And uh, you all, do, Brenda, something else we have in common. <laughs> it's Brenda and I have a lot of things in common. My new me, uh, her son's birthday is my birthday. How about that? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, Suburban, I did not see uh, what was written, so I'll have to go back and check that later. But, uh, you know, I'll check that later. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You made my day. I don't look 69. Yeah. Should I keep it a secret, not tell anybody I'm 69? No. I'm trying to decide if I should let this gray go or if I should color it again. I bought, I bought the stuff, but I'm not decided yet. So, you know, if some people have beautiful salt and pepper hair. That's, I just got this mousy hair with, I don't know if this is going to be pretty or not. It's just gray. So, you know, decisions, decisions. We'll see. All right, I'm going to sew this. Uh, she is right. It is my childish behavior. Please don't remove her wrench. Okay. I didn't know if it was him or somebody else because I thought she blocked somebody else. Be you. Yep. I love you here. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Okay. I'm going to put a, put a hem right here. To make that finish so when I sew this on and flip it over it's got a finished hem on it. So I'm going to swivel you around to my machine and get that done. Well, oh, I'm going to choke myself with my wire to my microphone. Hopefully it reaches all right. I make my way over to my machine. Okay. So here's my facing. I'm going to turn it over a little bit of a turn and then turn it again and sew it down just to make a little hem on it. And of course, I'm folding it toward the wrong side. So when I flip it over, the right side will be finished. Now, I have black thread in my machine. I do not want black thread in my machine. So here's another persnickety thing. It's going to waste time, but this is what sewing is about. You got to make it right. So and you know what else is going to be fun is watching me thread this needle. <laughs> I've been having more and more trouble threading needles. If I'm lucky, I get it the first or second try, but it might take me 10 minutes to thread this needle. Yeah, it's just not as easy as it used to be. Now, what color thread should I use? I didn't bring them all with me. Oh, I might have to use white. I've got this gray blue. Let's see. I got this gray blue, but the background is more of a goldy color. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with just the white on this fabric and change it when I choose a contrasting fabric. Alrighty, so I need to get a new bobbin out. 
Oh no, I don't. I got I got weight already. I got weight already wound. Okay. So I'll put my bobbin in my bobbin holder. And put it in here. Put it up here. And now the fun part, try to thread this needle. Oh, what do you know? First try. Yay, I'm glad on a live stream. I don't wanna keep you waiting there forever for me to try and thread that needle. <laughs> okay, the white thread is in. You know, this little machine I have, it's just an inexpensive Kenmore. It's done well for me. You know, it's not metal, it's plastic. The insides are all metal, of course. And it's done pretty well for me. Someday I want to get a, someday I'd love to have a serger. So maybe if I save up my bandana sewing money, one day I'll get myself a serger. That would make things easier, especially when I make my mittens out of sweaters, because I do a whole lot of seaming and cutting and snipping that a serger would take care of automatically. All right, let's see, I'm so, so in the right place here. I get talking, I'll forget what I'm doing. All right, so I fold it over just the tiniest bit, maybe an eighth of an inch, and then again. And then, hopefully this won't be too noisy. I'm gonna zigzag it. So you're seeing the real deal today. You're seeing me making an apron from scratch. And this isn't an embellished one. This is one I started right from cutting the first piece. Those other few I found at a good price, but they weren't made as well as I liked. So I cut off the cheapy strings and added a ruffle, put on nice fabric strings and improved them. That way I could sell them for $18 instead of more. Because the body of them was nice and it was looked like it was a decent twill fabric. All right, this is, normally I would iron this first, but I don't know if my son has an iron. If it, he does, I don't know where it is. And this is just gonna go on this bottom edge here of the facing because the rest are going to be sewn in as seams around the neck and arms of the apron. Where arms would be if they did have arms. An apron. I don't know if Melissa is still here or not, but I was so glad you joined me, Melissa. And I hope you get to know me a little bit because I plan on frequenting your channel and your husband's channel all the time. And it's nice when we comment that you know a little bit about who I am. Instead of just a name on a page. I like that with all my subscribers <coughs> and with the other channels I watch. You know, people don't think on the internet you can really get to know people. And for real, you can't really get to know them because they can let you only see certain things. But if you watch a long time, chances are you're, you're gonna be able to pick up a lot about what the person's really like. And some people are just so sweet and nice. And I love that we've met, even if it's only in 2D. So, yeah. All right, there, I put a hem on this piece, this facing, and I've snipped off the ends. And now I'm going to pin it let me, to my apron body. And to do that, I'm gonna put right sides together. I think you can just barely see right here. Let me move my machine over a little, there. 
I'm going to put right sides together and see, I got this hem here now. So when I flip it over, the hem is finished on the other side. That's why I like to do that first. Alrighty. Now I'm just going to pin this all along this edge. So it doesn't slip slide around while I'm sewing. Make sure it's lining up with no puckering in the middle. Because sometimes I cut them slightly bigger than the original and then you don't want to pucker in the middle if you needed to ease that edge out instead of putting it in absolutely even. Okay, I have right sides together. With the facing and the apron. There we go, it's lining up nicely. Alrighty. And now I will stitch it. I'm gonna sew it from here all the way up here, around here, and all the way around here, and just about an inch down this way. And then I'll flip the whole thing over inside out, or right side out, I guess. I'm going to use a straight stitch for this. Okay, and I'm using a small, just a small um, seam allowance because I didn't really add a lot of seam allowance. I cut it slightly bigger, but not by much. So I'm just going to use a small, like one quarter inch seam allowance on this. Back stitch to lock it in there and make it secure. And then I'm going to just run the edge of my foot along the edge of the fabric. So it's just a little bit of seam allowance. If you watch my videos from when I was up in Lancaster County, but this fabric I got at the uh, Mennonite uh, thrift shop. The what's it called? Reuse it, reuse it thrift shop. Every time we go to Pennsylvania, you'll see, and we go there. We I love that thrift shop. It's huge and it's well organized. It's super clean and it's got wonderful stuff in it. And the prices are decent. They're fair, but they're decent. And so I got this fabric there, and I got. I'll show you the other ones I got there. Uh, same day, I also got this fabric at the Mennonite thrift shop. And one just like it, but a different color. This fabric. So I'll be making aprons out of that. I'm also going to be making uh, prairie skirts or frontier skirts. And they'll be kind of patchworky, either in long tiers or in patchworks. And these fabrics will also look great, work great for those. What I'd like to do is go again to more thrift shops and find either some solid fabrics or you can also use bed sheets. So if there's some nice bed sheets there that still have a lot of life left into them, wash them up, cut them up, mix and match, and you can make skirts and other things with them. Aprons too. Now on the top, I've, I'm down a little from the edge with my foot because the, uh, they're not even at the top where I cut it a little different. So I'm getting down low enough to catch both edges. So you keep checking all the time to make sure you're catching 
both. Alrighty. And now, yeah, white is working good. I can barely see that thread. Of course, I'm on the back side too, though. All right. I remove my pins as I sew so I don't break a needle. This is real time sewing here and backing it up to lock that stitch in and make it tight. All right. Cut the threads on both sides. And then I'm going to turn them right side out. So that little corner I push out. And then this top I push out. Now if there were some real serious curves in this, I would clip the curves in the seam allowance so, they, so it would um, lay flat. But this is such a small seam allowance and the curves are just slightly curved. So it's not going to hurt anything. It's, it's going to lay flat. So that's what I did there. So here's, here's the front of the apron, here's the back of the apron, and here's the bodice liner here or facing. So I'm going to take a pin and pull out the corners, make them sharp on the bodice, because it kind of wants to stick in there. And then I'm going to top stitch to make a nice lay flat. and detail. If I wanted to, I could use a contrasting thread to make a detail with the, with the um, top stitching, but I'm just going to use the white thread. And again, if I had an iron, I'd iron this first. It's highly recommended you do, but I'm just going to be real careful to make sure that these seams are crisp and flat before my needle goes over it. So. Again, I'm just going to run it along, run my uh, presser foot along the side to uh, make it a very narrow allowance there. But I am going to increase the size of my stitch a little bit because a little more length in a top stitch I think is um, attractive. Not too much, but just a little bit longer to make a decorative top stitch. Lock it in. And whenever you turn a corner, you want to put your needle down and pivot. That way you don't lose your place. Everything stays nice and even. And you always want to be sure your underside is nice and flat. No bunching up. Not too hard so far, right? You can make an apron. Now this was a out of the blue live stream. I wasn't really planning on doing this, but when I was all alone in the house here, I said, I'll just have my friends come in and keep me company while I sew. All right, now this one I can see for some reason, the seam is tucked in a little bit. So I need to pull that sewn seam out so it isn't um, making a little ditch. We want, yeah, like that. We want that seam out there nice and flat. That's right. Same here. Pull that seam out like it would if I ironed it. And roll it so the bottom uh, layer is not showing from the top side. stretch down last side now 
Now I'm going to be selling these first on my Susie Bandana Facebook page. And then on Etsy if they don't sell there. On Etsy they're going to cost a little more because Etsy charges fees. Last little inch here, and then back it up, lock it in, and done. So, I'm going to trim this, show it to you, and then I'm going to read your comments. Trim those ending strings and trim off. The starting strings. I'd like to be able to go in afterward and uh, clean this video up and cut some dead parts out, things like that. But if I do that, YouTube takes away all the chat. And I don't want that, so it's just gonna have to be left as is. All right, I'm gonna come around now, show you what I did, and read your comments. Okay, here's the apron, and what I've done, you can see the top stitching all along here, all that even top stitching. Nice and neat, the same distance away from the edge, a nice finish all the way around. And what it's done is attached and finished off this uh, facing on the back side, so you have a nice Two, oops, I'm touching my microphone again. A nice two layer to the apron. All right, comment time. Let me see how far back I have to go. Ah. Okay. Suburban blocked another troll. Thank you. I didn't see that, but I appreciate it. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> no choking oneself aloud. <laughs> okay. I never, I can never thread an evil. Even when I could see, I couldn't. I like watching this. Stop worrying, Susie. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay, I inherited two portables. This is Tamsin. I, I inherited two portable sewing machines and come back, come back. And a, oh, I think she means a serger uh, from my mother-in-law's personal items. I already had one portable sewing machine. I need to set all of them up. I don't know how to use a serger. Okay, I've never used one either, but I see what they do and they could be very helpful to me. Uh, I need to be looking for maybe a secondhand one in good condition. Uh, Tamsin, do you go by Tammy or Tamsin? I had four years of home ec in high school when they still did sewing. Yeah, I took sewing in high school too. I was terrible. <laughs> I remember, I think I was 13 and my mom was sent a pattern and it was an old fashioned circle skirt. Now they're all the rage again, but by then, but then they were old fashioned, you know. And I did a terrible job. I had it all twisted and messed up. I was embarrassed. Don't sew your mic wire. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be just like me to do something like that. I put all my sewing machines upstairs away. I need to get them out and make some crafty things. Yes, you do. <laughs> okay, I agree with you. I do feel like you get to know the personalities. That's true. I don't have a channel. I just, I'm just a subscriber. I'm a full-time homemaker. I worked many years in the healthcare field. I was a uh, medical transcriptionist and a legal transcriptionist for quite a few years in the rehabilitation therapy field as an SRNA and rehabilitation tech. Good for you, Tamsin. Uh-oh, I've got, I've got 10% battery left. This isn't gonna last long. Ah. 
I've always enjoyed crafts and creative work. Bless you for sharing your beautiful skills with us. You're welcome. Thank you, Laura. You're very sweet to me. Hello, Canterbury. Jeffrey, hi from Texas. Hello, Jeffrey's a special name to me because I have a brand new grandson named Jeffrey. Do you quilt? I was thinking about trying to begin quilting. I have quilted. I haven't in a long time. I think the last quilt I made was for my sister's wedding. And that was like 30 some years ago. <laughs> so it's been a long, long time. Okay, Brenda, my new me says, I have to ask, does your hubby roll his eyes at you when he went at all you take with you? Oh, my sewing machine. My son rolls his eyes when I just want to take my journal with me anywhere. Uh, this time he was really good about it. Uh, I think the first time he was saying, why are you bringing that? But he was, he was great this time. Doll Restoration Project, Canterbury. Great. Yeah. Do you ever find hot dog patterns? Laura, I don't know what that is. Darlene loves watching. My new me says it's relaxing to watch. Yay, even with the traffic going by. <laughs> There's a lot of trucks that go by here. All right, Tamsin, I'm very happy. We'll have this on video to always be able to go back and use for reference. I think it's so neat how we have so advanced at being able to come into someone else's home and learn. Yes, I enjoy that too. Baking Diva. I just bought an apron from a woman on Etsy. I love it. You can see me wear it on my video tomorrow. Yay. Okay. I subscribe to your channel, says Laura, to Baking Diva. Yeah, go ahead and subscribe to each other's channels here. I mean, let's support each other. And of course, if you're not subscribed to mine, please do. As a matter of fact, if you're interested in entering those giveaways that's going, that are going to happen on Memorial Day at 1 o'clock p.m., Eastern Standard Time on my live stream, you have to be a subscriber. So please subscribe to my channel. That's very helpful to me. I collect vintage aprons. Did a video on making a big pocket apron without a pattern a while back, Canterbury. I'm going to, I'm fixing to make a ton of little girl aprons to sell and gift just to use up my surplus fabric. Yep. What is your Facebook channel again? If you're talking to me, it's Bandana Grandma, B-A-N-D-A-N-A-G-R-A-M-M-A, -A -A -A, Bandana Grandma. Uh, there's, oh, wait a minute. You're on it, right? <laughs> You're talking to some, you must be talking to somebody else. Uh, I never use the surgery either, just a tight zigzag. That's what I use for mine. Oop, don't touch my mic. Uh, when I do all my zigzagging and yeah, I don't have a surgery. It's zigzag and cut. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's a decent material, Laura. Aw, oh, thank you, Erica. Yep, make a garden apron. Make big pockets and make it a heavy material so you can put things in it that you need to. Or a big um, uh, apron in the bottom made extra large but with elastic around it so that it gathers up and that way you can pull it out and put your pickings in there your produce that you're picking that works well okay all right i'm running out of battery so i'm not going to be able to finish my apron on here i'm sorry but what i'm going to do is i'm going to make the ruffle i'm going to make the sashes for the waist and i'm going to make the ties for the top and i'll be done what I'll do is I'm going to show you how I rip up my fabric to make those. You're welcome, Tansen. Uh, I'm going to show you how I rip up as long as my battery holds out because it's a lot easier than cutting if you're making straight pieces like ties. So, yeah, maybe, maybe I could finish it after it charges, but let's see if I can fit in at least tearing up the fabric to make the ties. If I die, I die, and you'll know why. All right. This skinnier piece will make good ties. And I like, some of my aprons have had the thin ties. Some have had medium ties. The one I like the best has the thick ties, which is this one. So I am going to use this one as a pattern. Uh, I think I can put these in any direction and it will be fine. 
So if I measure this out, this, this is doubled. It's like, see, I doubled it over so it isn't a raw side. It's both finished on both sides. So that's what I'll do. I'll measure this out to there and then fold it over one more time. And that will be the width I need to make a nice ruffle on the bottom. And for length, what I usually do is make it a few inches longer than the actual garment, I mean wider. That way I can put these pleats in, see? So if there's the width there, and I want it this wide, and I'm gonna cut it probably to here to give me room for pleats. Sometimes people, if they want a lot of uh, ruffle or uh, gathering, they'll do one and a half times the width of the garment. But I'm gonna do it right about to here. So I'm gonna cut up here that way, but then I'm just gonna nick it here and then rip it. And what that does is it'll rip it straight along the grain of the fabric. So that's a straight edge right there because it ripped right along the grain. If I took a piece of thread here, it will go all the way to the end, see? Because it's right on the, on the grain. So there's my ruffle piece. Ta-da, there's my ruffle piece. And now I need ties for the waist, which I like them to be wide. So let's see what we got to work with here. Now, on, oh. says I have 5% battery left. All right, here's a ruffle tie, I mean a waist tie. And it's this wide, and that's doubled, of course, to finish it off double. So I'm going to fold it over double here to get it the same width. And then for length, this was a nice length, so I will measure it with this and add a little further seam at the end. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna to have to redo this because I don't wanna cut into something I don't wanna cut into without taking some more time with it. But you get the gist. I'm gonna measure out, cut up, rip it, do another one, rip it, and then sew the ties together and do the same for the neck. So put them all together and then I'll top stitch around everything. Uh, I may use this ruffle or I may make a ruffle out of a solid fabric and use this ruffle on another one that maybe has a solid body. So. Thank you all for coming. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to back up because right here is where I'm going to be putting my little uh, end pieces where it shows what videos you can watch. Here, 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 when I put this up as a video. So thanks for sh coming by and spending time with me while I'm all alone in Massachusetts. I hope you enjoyed this little sewing tutorial. Just kind of ad hoc, jump on and do it. And I'll catch the rest of your comments. I look at the feed when it uploads as a uh, Facebook, I mean a YouTube video. Please check out how to enter the contest for the giveaways on Monday by looking at my other videos. I'll put links below. Bye. God bless you.